Welcome to Trady Tuesdays with Jules Zellam from Catalyst Plus. This podcast is for the tradesperson who is tired of working 60 hours each week on their business and who wants to spend more time enjoying life with their family and friends. This is episode seven, your business structure and your lifestyle. Hello, welcome back to Trady Tuesday. And this week we're talking about the business structure that we were discussing last week and how that can actually fit into your um, your future self, your lifestyle that you wish to create over your five-year personal plan. Now, I know that business structures can sound a little bit overwhelming. And to recap the three types, main types that we talked about last week, the sole trader, which is an individual, really helpful if all you wish to do is make enough money for yourself and also to work kind of like a freelancer or a bit of a contractor. Um, A partnership is if you have a husband and wife team or two really good mates um, that are working together. But the problem with that is um, everything that you both own and owe can be taken by the business if things go pear-shaped. And then ultimately the company. The company being a separate legal entity and something that um, can separate from your personal assets and your business assets. So it's all about asset protection when we go with a company. Now, when we look at our five-year plan, and what we want to be achieving through our business, which we looked at at a previous episode, we need to actually look at the type of business that we're trading as and whether or not that is conducive to our what we want to achieve in our personal lives. So what do I mean by that? If I want to be growing my business, employing people, um, getting big contracts with other businesses and working so that I can get the efficiencies by growing the business with scale, um, then it wouldn't be feasible for me to start as a sole trader because you're already saying, well, I'm going to play small and stay small. But if that is your five-year plan to do all these growth things and to have these employees, then right from the get-go, we want to get started as a company. And there are several reasons for this. One, we might want to get finance and we want to get finance through the business and not necessarily through our own personal assets. The second is that as soon as we hire somebody, the risk goes up and it makes it a little bit more difficult um, for, you know, compliance and making sure that everything is going smoothly. And thirdly, we oftentimes won't be able to get the kind of contracts that we desire because we're trading as a sole trader. That is mainly a perception thing. It's mainly because um, other businesses think that if you aren't trading as a company, you're not really taking things seriously. Um, I know some of the really big entities won't even look at you if you're trading as a sole trader or a partnership. Um, And that's like, like if you started as a sole trader, you aren't starting with the end in mind, um, with where you want to be going and how you want to get there. So the business structure is really important for, for choosing how you're going to end up being in business and what kind of business you're going to be. 
And it's really important as well for your asset protection and for your tax strategies. Um, if you talk to your accountant, I'm sure that they will talk to you about the differences in um, how the tax strategies work. Ultimately, if you are going in business, if you are looking to be in business and put your hand on your heart and say, right, I'm going in business and I'm going to build something successful for myself, whatever success means, um, which is basically what you wrote on your five year personal plan. That's what success is. Um, then a company is the business structure that you want to be choosing because it's more in alignment with being in business. Partnership a little bit the same um, because you've got two people in it, but the sole trader mechanism is really if you only want to be building enough work for yourself, you don't want to worry about anybody else, you want the simple life and you're, um, you're really just making a job on flexible work arrangements is essentially what a sole trader um, is from that kind of perspective of how you can achieve your goals. Now, I'm not dishing sole traders. They have a massive role to play in all of our worlds and in our businesses. And there are a lot of really healthy, um, you know, sole trader people out there and out and about. And a lot of businesses start out as a sole trader. Um, I argue they start out as a sole trader because they're not really clear with what they want to achieve. And that's why in my previous episodes, I've been really getting some clarity and some focus. What is it that you really want to achieve in, in your business? And why are you looking to go in business? If you are looking to go in business, as I have, like, I suppose I can talk to you about some of the reasons why I hear people want to go into business. And there's an exercise in caution um, when I'm talking about this. So, so what I mean is a lot of business owners come to me and they say, right, I, um, I'm sick and tired of working with my boss, he, she, they are not, um, they're not very friendly. They don't value my work. I can do it better. And it goes on and on and on. I can be a better business owner. Now, my caution to you is when you go in business, it is so much different to being a salary and wage owner. The salary and wage owner, you go to work, put your hand out, get your pay packet, and the money that is in your bank account is the money that is after super, after tax has been paid. So it is 100% your play money. And the caution is when you go into business, oftentimes I see people have that same mentality. They get a sales invoice from their customer. They get that invoice paid and they see that that money is actually the money that relates to um, the money that they've always received, which is their fair game. The problem is you have to pay your GST, your sales tax, your VAT, wherever in the first world you are that you have to pay um, that tax. Um, so that money you have to put aside into another bank account. If you have employees, you have to take away their tax and put that in a separate account and their superannuation or your pension scheme over in the UK, um, your health fund, if you're in the U S that money needs to be put aside each and every invoice that you receive. Then you have all of your bills that you need to pay. 
and you need to process all of those bills and then only then is the money left for you and then say your invoice was 1100 you're probably down to something like $200 after that money and then you want to put a portion of that money aside again for your your savings for your future and a portion another portion put aside for your personal tax so then you're probably ending up with $100 to live on out of that $1,100. Um, and that's if you don't have expenses um, included in there, like direct costs to fulfill that particular project. And that is where the business owner, especially the sole trader business owner, gets into a lot of hot water. They don't split that money out each and every time they receive money. The second reason why I see people want to go in business is because they want to make a bleep ton of money. <laughs> um, and look, you know, making money is a fun thing to do. It is a joyful thing to do. I love making money. It's always been a favorite thing of mine even when I was a little kid always figured out ways to make money um whether it be selling golf balls or like you know growing extra vegetables so that I could sell um the surplus to people like that was something right from a young age I was always loving to do um and and it thrives within me but it doesn't get me out of bed every day, if that makes sense. Making money can become a bit of a drag. It can be, it can also become a bit of something that is not so fun, not so exciting. Um, and it's not enough. When the real things happen in life, money doesn't, doesn't fix it. Money doesn't save the people from dying in your world. It doesn't save, like if, you know, you get really sick and ill, it doesn't make the people come to visit you. Um, money is a tool and it's a resource and it's a way of keeping count and of measuring success but it's not the full level of success. And sometimes we chase money from the, the dollar picture, but we don't actually chase it from the profit number. So what I mean by that is oftentimes we say that we want to make a million dollars. I hear, I hear these comments so often. I want to make a million dollars this year. I want to make a million dollars this quarter. I want to make a million dollars every month. You know, like those numbers, what they really mean is they want to make total sales of that number. If they truly meant they wanted to make a million dollars, they would be saying, I want to make a million dollars profit after tax. Right, so after all of my expenses, I've got a million dollars in my hot little pocket. And I think we need to be very careful about the reasons why we go into business and the reasons why we wanna chase this money, right? Um, oftentimes we chase it because we think when we get to that money target, we are a certain way. We will be happy, we will achieve success, we will be recognized as successful or whatever those things are. And I can guarantee that um, I've definitely seen businesses that have a very modest income, so modest sales number, and a much higher profit in dollars and in percentage wise 
um, than some of these multi-million dollar businesses. And that's because these multi-million dollar businesses get there because there's so much expense involved. Um, They get there at all costs. Um, They don't look at that profitability from a perspective or that income, I should say, from a perspective of profit. They look at it as a drive to achieve a certain target and then they end up working crazy hours to achieve that. And at the end of the day, they hardly have any leftover money compared to the year before where they made significantly less money. So I suppose what I'm asking you to actually reflect upon is in your five-year personal plan, what kind of business structure actually achieves all those things that you want to achieve in your personal life, your family life, your friend life, your your human life, right? The only thing that we have that is non-renewable in our whole world is our time. Once we spend it, boom, it's gone. Don't get it back. And it's the only thing that not only is non-renewable, but it is also the only thing that is not guaranteed. Think about that. If our time is not guaranteed and it's non-renewable, how do we really truly want to show up every single day to go to business? Why do we truly want to be in business? And what kind of business structure do we need to fulfill that business? To fulfill those goals, to fulfill those personal goals, to fulfill that family time? Who do we want to be? Because the clearer and more consistent we get in showing up to be that person, that is when we start to fulfill our desire for happiness rather than we've hit some rudimentary target, some fake target that gives us our egos some kind of stroking and some kind of like they're there as Sheldon would say of Big Bang um, some comfort right we we want to make sure that the drivers for putting us into going into business are properly supported and if it's properly supported we can then easily choose the right business structure for us. Now, if you're you're looking to create a simple life, you don't want to have employees, you want to work as much and as little as you want in a flexible work life so that you can spend as much time with your family, maybe a sole trader is perfect for you. If you want to do those things, but service a large number of people using a digital platform or something like that, then maybe, you know, and and you've got big goals to achieve some really big revenue, maybe a sole trader isn't the right way for you because the level of tax you'll pay will be astronomical when you hit the bigger targets, like more than 180,000 in profit every year for example, depending upon your driving force, what you want to be achieving over the five years is how you're going to choose the business structure that suits you the most. And if you go to somebody to ask for advice to set something up, say you choose to set up a company and they say, oh no, you're 
starting out, start out as a sole trader, I say, woo camel. I have seen so many business owners have their ambition ripped from them because somebody said to play small. If your ambition is to go create a business with multiple employees and to have a lot of equipment and to really scale up quickly, then you're going to want to stay working um, with a company, right? Like you want to set up a company right from the get-go because what I see happen so often and why I'm banging on about this for as long as I have been and for a second episode is I see so many business owners start up as a sole trader so many and they don't understand the risk they don't understand when they start growing their business exponentially and they only see their accountant once every 12 months or whatever it might be they don't see the lost opportunity they don't realize that to set up a company means that they have to go through all of the stages all over again get a new bank account, get a new supplier contract with your suppliers, get new customer contracts with your customers, get new insurances, get new bank accounts. Probably said that already, but you know, like it is a big deal when you set up a business. And if in 12 months time, you're going to convert to a company or in two years time, you're going to convert to a company, I say rip the bandaid off now and do it now if you want to get finance you need two years financial statements in your company to get finance for equipment if you need to get um you know like there's so many things that you need and you need historical data for it if you want to get a special license you want to get say you're a builder and you want to get a bigger license um, rather than just doing the small stuff you want to go start building houses or big renovations you need to be set up as a company right from the beginning if that's what you want to achieve in that five-year plan you see your personal life needs to be the driver for why you do what you do in your business because it's your personal life that you're giving up to work in business and you're choosing how much time to work, how much time, how much effort to put into it. If you are being insanely ambitious and you've got a family, little kids, um, a wife, a husband, and you're working 60 to 80 hours a week I question why you do it and the reason why I question it is that's a lot of time to be away from your family right so what is it that you're not addressing in your personal life for you to want to be with your family or is it that you've got some unrealistic expectation of what it means to be the the provider or um how much you need to be generating to facilitate your family. And when you think of all of those things, you you know what kind of business you need to be creating and you can get clearer on it, right? Now, I say this as a little pot calling a kettle black. Um, I've in my past worked really long hours because you know, multiple reasons. Um, either I've been single and I don't really want to spend that much single time with myself. <laughs> um, we've all been there. Or I've been in, um, a, in a relationship that I wasn't necessarily happy in. Um, and it was more fulfilling for me to work long hours. Um, 
or maybe I felt like I was really needed by my customers more than I was needed elsewhere, right? Um, and, and then you have to get clear with why you want to work that much. Let's face it, business owners can be workaholics. Um, and then you have to get really clear with how much is enough and why you want all these widgets and gizmos and gadgets and all the fancy pants stuff. Um, you know, we just have to look at the things that are out of our control. When we had the bushfires last year, the pandemic last year, and recently the floods on the Eastern seaboard, um, you know, my heart goes out to all of those business owners and all those homeowners that, that their lives have been turned upside down yet again. You know, like I think one thing that is really clear for us at the moment is that we live in a world that is unpredictable and it's very changeable. And again, not, you know, not necessarily that, um, not necessarily do we have that um, guarantee that we're going to be here tomorrow. So, I suppose I'm asking you to be really intentional about the business that you're creating and look at the business structure that you're looking to create. And also then from there, look at the bigger picture. What do you like? What is the million dollars? If that's one of your goals, um, million dollars of sales, what is that really underlying? What is that? impact is that going to have on your community, on the people around you? How can you make things better for society through the work that you do? That is going to give you so much more fulfillment than making a million dollars. And look, making a million dollars is fun. It's awesome. It's exciting. And once you do it, wake up the next morning, and, you know, the buzz and the excitement's not really there. Or maybe it's there for a couple of days, but you get what I'm saying, right? If you have a bigger picture, a bigger purpose for why you're in business, for your family, for the people around you, um, and for your society, your community, what you're giving back to them, and, you know, how you're leaving a legacy at the end of the day through your business that is going to get you out of bed each and every day even on those days that are so rip you apart and you just go oh why am I doing this because there will be days like that you know um and there'll be other days where you'll be just so incredibly excited for the work that you're doing um but you just want to try to create an amazing business, something that makes you feel proud every every single day and something that you want to call your own. And I hope that is of help for you. I just have realized how much I've been talking. I really do hope that this conversation has been helpful for navigating why you want to be a sole trader, a partnership or a company. And what is your driving forces for the kind of business that you are looking to create? And maybe it was a bit of a deeper, meaningful conversation to get you to just start thinking about where you want to go and what you want to be and who you want to be and how you want to be remembered. Um, and yeah, that's my Trady Tuesday for this week. I hope it was of help. I'll see you around. I'll be here next Tuesday. Hope you will too. See you later. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, come on over to tradytuesdays.com.au and join our Accelerate crew from Catalyst Plus.